Uh, we're joined now by Omer Sharif. He is the founder of Inflation Insights. And if there's somebody out there who has uh, a better idea of what goes into the <clears throat> CPI reports that we get on a monthly basis, I haven't heard about them or haven't heard them speak. Omer, thanks so much for coming on the show. Really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. So uh, let's just dive right in. We had this inflation report on Thursday of last week. Very clearly to me, at least, it was a surprise to markets. From hearing you speak in early October, I'm not sure how much of a surprise this was to you. What, what did we actually see from this data last week, and why do you suppose it surprised markets so much? Yeah, so, uh, you know, look, uh, markets are a little bit, um, uh, whatever happens last month, they kind of take it as a bit of a given in the following month. So, mm-hmm. you know, people are looking for a much higher number than what we actually got. Um, what we got was much, much better news, I think at least for one month on the inflation front, um, we just saw prices, you know, either declining outright for a lot of things you buy for your home, for example, or outright uh, slowing down for, for a number of other things. So it, it was a good report, but there's obviously still, there's a lot of wood to chop here in terms of, you know, getting inflation down to, to 2%. We're nowhere near there. Yeah. But I think this was a good first step in terms of what we're hoping to try to see on a more regular basis. Can you explain to our listeners, I heard your explanation of this elsewhere, maybe I read it, the change in uh, medical care services. We saw that decline in the month of October, and my understanding is that it is a a bit technical in terms of how CPI actually measures how all of us actually pay for medical care services. Yeah, so it's, it, it, you know, for example, it's not what you pay out of pocket, uh, for your for your health insurance, it's okay. not what your insur- what your company pays on your behalf. It's actually uh, the number is it's lagged quite a bit, so it's almost about a year old. It reflects what happened in 2021, um, and you know this is basically data about what in, how insured essentially insures profit. What did they do in 2021? Hmm. And what happened? You got to go back to the pandemic. What happened in 2020? A lot of people could not do things like you know elective surgeries. Nobody wanted to be in a doctor's office uh, with other people who might have COVID. So people were not using healthcare as much. So in 2020, their profits went up a lot because you were not using healthcare as much, but the premiums were still rising. Um, 2021, we had the vaccines. People started getting more comfortable going back to the doctor's office. Premiums still went up, but utilization increased a lot. Yeah. And essentially year over year, you know, their profits were still positive, but they were not as strong as in 2020. That counts as a drop in health insurance in the CPI. So this is this is uh, it's a technical, it's a bit of a quirk, uh, if you will, in terms of how they measure this stuff. But at the end of the day, it, it is reflecting kind of old news. Um, so I, I wouldn't, you know, look, your health insurance premium is going up for 2023. Um, this is old, old news. But the way it hits the CPI, it counts as a, as a big drag, and that's what we saw. And by the way, which we're going to see every single month probably through most of next year, this is going to continue to be drag on the core CPI every year going forward. Oh, Mayor, what's your... Every month going forward through, through next October. As I think anyone who's ever paid rent or a mortgage realizes, uh, shelter costs yep. oftentimes make up a large portion of the average American budget. What are we seeing when it comes to shelter costs, specifically in the CPI reports? How is that measured? And it, what are your expectations for, you know, again... We've got this most recent report. It was better than expected, but I think everybody's acknowledging that the next few really matter here to see if we have any confirmation of what we saw in October CPI. What's your expectation for shelter costs? Sure. So the most important thing to note is is the CPI lags what's happening in the rental market by about a year, roughly, because it measures the rent for basically every anyone and everyone who is renting, uh, not just people who are trying to move right now to get a new apartment. Those costs, so for folks who are trying to move and, and get a new apartment right now, we know from a lot of different data sets in the rental market, those costs are, are starting to, they're still increasing, but that, that increase is starting to slow down. And so, and it, it, whatever you want to look at, Zillow, apartment list, uh, CoreLogic, you know, those costs have definitely slowed down quite a lot. And that's going to take a while to feed in the CPI. Okay. Uh, my, my expectation is probably not till Q1, um, you know, Maybe February, March of 2023, we'll start to see that feed in. Um, but we, I think the good news is, you know, we are starting to see those costs in, in, for new leases start to slow down, and that should start to come into CPI in, in a few months. Um, until then, we'll probably still see 
pretty kind of steady as she goes type numbers in terms of rent and, and shelter in the CPI. Um, probably through I would I would imagine February or March and oh, next year. We we finally started to see um, one of the key inflationary data points from last year uh, start to cool off a little bit. Uh, used cars and trucks came down for the month of October. I think it was two point four percent. What's your expectation yep. for that one segment? I mean, you know, just practically speaking, let's get away from markets for a minute. If I'm looking at buying a car uh, sometime in the next yeah. year, what's your expectation for you know vehicle inflation going forward? Yeah, so I think used cars is, is a good one um, to talk about because that's a, that's the space where we know that wholesale costs have gone down almost, you know, somewhere between 10 to 15 percent since June. So it doesn't matter what kind of measure you want to look at, uh, uh, auction prices for, from different, you know, companies, Mannheim, Black Book, so on. Those costs are down 10 to 15 percent for the dealers who are buying at auctions um, just in the last, you know, four or four months or so. That has taken a little while to translate into the retail market. So if you're looking to buy a car, you haven't seen a lot of that 15% decline yet, but it's starting to show up in the data as of this past month. So as you said, we got a 2.4% decline. Prior to that, we had a 1% decline. I think we're, you're kind of looking at that sort of a number somewhere between 1% to 2% uh, in terms of a drop, probably I would imagine for the next few months because retail's got a little while to catch up. And, and that wholesale, you know, drop we've seen, it will be passed through to the consumer because these guys are sitting on cars they bought a few months ago. They don't want to unload them for cheaper than what they bought them, obviously. Mm. But depreciation is going to be an issue for them, and they will start to lower those prices. So my, my, my feeling is over the next probably three, four months, you're probably looking at the used car prices going down 1% to 2% a month over the next few months. Omer, um, you've only had, if, if you've even seen it so far, you've only had about three hours to digest it. We got the producer price index this morning, which seemed to confirm some of the readings from the consumer price index of last week. Any takeaways from that? Again, can't hold you to this. It was just released just a couple hours ago, so I'm sure you haven't had time to do a full look through. But any takeaways there? Uh, yeah, you know, it, it was certainly a little bit weaker than expected, which is which is you know, good news in terms of the pass through for, for consumer prices. Um, what I would say is that um, you want to be a little bit careful with the PPI data. Uh, it, it is, it's a very different animal than the CPI because mm-hmm. it is much more of a snapshot kind of mid month to mid month. It's not a full month average. And so, you know, it, it sort of doesn't really give you a, a great picture of what's, what's happening um, for the most part in terms of what's going to happen to your, the price you pay on the shelf for an item, for example. That said, anytime it's going down, what, what it sort of tells you is that retailers' margins are being squeezed a little bit. Uh, so what, whatever they're paying for an item, their markup is kind of going down, which is always, always good news for the consumer. So uh, I'm hopeful that that means that as you go into sort of you know, the holiday season, that you hopefully can expect to pay somewhat lower prices than maybe what you were expecting to see um, because the markups are going down right now for, for producers. Omar Sharif, uh, is founder of Inflation Insights, joins us today to talk about last week's CPI report as well as uh, just this morning's producer price uh, index inflation report. Omar, really appreciate you joining us. Uh, very insightful as, as always and looking forward to having you back on the show. Thank you.